Well, welcome to today's talk, Wednesday the 13th of December. Now, for the last few days, I've been talking to Professor Stefan Pilz in Austria about his uh, latest paper. And I'm going to give you the results of that now. Now, what they were looking at was the effect of the fourth dose of a COVID vaccine. Now, of course, we are where we are now with the current level of immunity, with the current variants and People in the United States, CDC, for example, advocating strongly that people get these additional booster doses and similar situation in the UK for certain specified groups. But is this working? Well, the data from Austria, to be quite honest, uh, says it's not. It really puts into doubt the current recommendations from the CDC and the British authorities. Because what they found was, and this is a population-wide study for basically the whole population of Austria, was that the additional dose of vaccine, the fourth vaccine, conferred uh, no reduction in deaths compared to people who'd only had three vaccines. Now, in fact, the people that had a fourth vaccine did actually have a higher death rate, a uh, slightly higher death rate on a very small baseline because not many people, thankfully, are dying. Um, but it wasn't statistically significant. So the authors have said there was no reduction, no change in death. So a fourth dose of vaccine is not protecting against death. So why are we doing it? Does it protect against infection? Well, yes, it does. For the first three months, there was a 17% reduction in the number of new infections. But, and it's a huge but, for the six months after that, for the six months into 2023, when this data was collected, there was actually more infections. So the vaccine is actually causing no reduction in mortality. And after a small three month hiatus for the six months after that, where the data was collected, it's actually causing more people to become infected. And I would have thought if more people are infected, then there's greater risk of long COVID, greater risk of sequelae. So really, what, what are we doing at the moment? There are significant fundamental questions to be asked here. And also, there was a general trend that they found that people who'd had more vaccines got more infections overall. People who'd had less vaccines got less COVID infections overall. What is going on here? Now, let's hope that this increase in infections that we're seeing is due to things like production of immunoglobulin type 4. Let's hope it's due to sensitisation of cells like suppressor T cells. I really hope that the increase in the infection that we are seeing is not caused by some overall effect reducing immune efficiency in the body uh, as a whole. Let's hope that's not the case. We simply don't have the data to adjudicate on that at the moment, but really quite significant questions to be asked. Now let's go into the detail on this. Do stick around. It is really interesting. Now this is the paper here. And we notice, for example, that there's Professor uh, Ionodis here and uh, Professor Pilts. So th these, are, these are some of the world's um, leading medical researchers in this peer-reviewed paper. There we go. It's from the journal of, uh, European Journal of Clinical Investigation. Now, this is very uh, readable, uh, surprisingly readable. Um, and the whole paper's there uh, and made available for free download. Um, for the amount of detailed medical information in it, um, it's actually really, really readable. And I would suggest that you download that. If nothing else, downloading it is good for the paper algorithm. So do, do can I encourage you to download that? Now let's get down to the details straight away. Now here we have it. This is the paper here. Effectiveness of a fourth SARS coronavirus 2 vaccine dose in previously infected uh, adults from Austria. Now these are people that are previously infected. So we're dealing with a population group here that are previously infected. Now, we have seen data from the Office for National Statistics in the UK, for example, that shows the amount of uh, SARS coronavirus 2 antibody was uh, at some points, I think it was over 99%. So I think it's fair to say that pretty well everyone has been exposed and the vast majority of people have been uh, infected now. So we're dealing with the previously infected population predominantly. So this data is highly relevant to the current population that we now are. So that makes perfect sense to me. Um, that's the link there, download it for yourself. Now the authors said the evidence uh, is limited on the effectiveness of the fourth vaccine dose against coronavirus disease prior to their paper. It was. You've got to really ask the question, why isn't this research being done in the United States? Why hasn't it been done in the UK? 
Um, why is it just being done in uh, Austria and a few other countries? Um, yeah, interesting question. Uh, in populations with prior SARS coronavirus to infection, which of course we all now are, they estimated the risk of uh, death, which was the primary outcome, and they also investigated the risk of uh, infection, as we have said. Uh, in case you're short of time, there was no difference to the amount of deaths. Infections went down for three months and then went dramatically up for uh, six months. Uh, so um, overall, um, looks like it's actually causing infections for longer, a six month period and a three month period. Now, the methods that, methods that they were used, um, it's, a, it's a nationwide retrospective observational study. So it covers huge numbers of people in the country. Data was from the 1st of November to the 31st of December, so a two-month period in 2022, although there is a follow-up that we will mention into 2023. Primarily, we're comparing uh, individuals with four versus three vaccine doses on the whole population. What were the, were the results? They found 3.9 million people previously infected. 71% of those had four vaccine doses. 38% had, uh, sorry, 7.1% had uh, four vaccine doses, 281,000 and 38% uh, had three vaccine doses. Now, these are huge numbers. 281,291, 1,545,242. So comparing these and these, we can get some pretty good uh, data from it. Now, um, I almost said the problem there was the really good news is uh, there was only 69 deaths in the whole country attributable to COVID in that period of time. Now, we could debate how attributable to COVID they were, um, but that wasn't enough to get some very good statistics out of it, but shows a very low background rate of death from COVID, which again puts a question mark over the current vaccination policy, really. So they recorded 69 deaths and 89,000 uh, infections. So pretty good numbers on the infections. Thankfully, very low numbers on the deaths, which is why the data on the deaths was more uncertain. Uh, the majority of... Uh, COVID-19 deaths and a significant portion of all-cause deaths occurred in nursing home residents. Sad to see, and of course, nursing home residents typically are inside all the time, often short of vitamin D. Factors that we could go on and talk about. There's no mention of medication or anything like that in the report, so we simply don't know. Right, relative vaccine effectiveness, RVE, for four vaccines versus three doses. Uh, 24% uh, negative effect against COVID-19 deaths. Now, as we said, this was only based on 69 deaths. So this is not significant, although it may be. We simply don't know. We don't have the numbers to say, thankfully. But what, we can, what the researchers can say with confidence is there is no uh, reduction in deaths as a result of the fourth vaccine dose, that is the second booster dose. 17% protection against infection for three months, but then after three months, for the six months after that, as we said, there was actually a lot more infections for reasons that we are concerned about. Protection against infection rapidly diminished over time. Uh, an infection with four vaccines was high during the extended follow-up until June 2023. So for the six months after this, more infections. So less infections for three months followed by more infections for six months. <clears throat> Not a very good trade-off, really, you might think. Now, um, adjusted hazard ratio for all-cause mortality. People that had four vaccines had lower mortality overall. But this is probably what you call the healthy vaccine effect, in that people that took the vaccine were healthier. So people that are about to die in hospices, for example, you wouldn't be vaccinating. And obviously people that already died of COVID can't die of something else anyway. Um, so um, healthy vaccination effect, uh, healthy vaccinee effect uh, there is probably the main factor. That is people with a fourth dose, 79% <coughs> less likely to die, suggesting healthy vaccine bias. Excuse me, I've still got a bit of a cough after my... <laughs> COVID episode last week. Um, anyway, moving on rapidly. What's the discussion from the authors? Um, in previously infected individuals, the fourth vaccine dose did not, did not reduce the risk of COVID-19 death. 
but was transiently re re related with the reduction of SARS coronavirus to infection, but they went up after that. Reversal of this effect in the, in the longer follow-up or cause mortality data suggests a healthy vaccine uh, bias. So the people that were getting a vaccine were more healthy. Now, more details. <clears throat> Mostly Pfizer vaccine. In this study, the overall case fatality was 0.08. But if we assume that, say, 10% of infections were picked up, of course, that will give an infection fatality rate much lower. So good to see that they are relatively low. Individuals with repeated previous infection had reduced reinfection risk. So, um, in other words, natural immunity was evident. People who'd had repeated infections did better. And in fact, the authors um, did say that uh, natural immunity may be the main determinant of immunological protection in a population. So definitely benefits seen from natural acquired immunity. By the end of 2022, the vast majority of the global population had already acquired some immune protection. Of course, as we've said, this has been around for a long time. And now at the end of 2023, of course, it's even more so. Compared to three vaccine doses, uh, those with fewer or no vaccine doses did not differ with regard to mortality. No protective effect on mortality. But had reduced risk of SARS coronavirus to infection early on. In 2022, infection fatality rates due to SARS coronavirus 2 significantly declined, suggesting transition into endemicity, as we know, which of course is good. Also, directly from the paper, in general, our study results question whether recommendations for repeated vaccine boosters against SARS coronavirus 2 are currently justified for large parts of the general population with a history of previous infections. CDC take note. Measures against SARS coronavirus 2, including vaccine policy, should be critically re evaluated with their risk to benefit ratio. Of course, we are not discussing adverse events of vaccines, of vaccines at all here, but we know they exist. So we're getting the risk of adverse events from the vaccine, known and unknown, not getting any reduction in deaths. We are getting a reduction in infections for three months, but then we get a result, an increase in infections for three months. We don't know why there's an increase in infections. We don't know if this is caused by some problem with the immune system as a whole or whether this is a specific effect. Either way, I would have thought that might constitute a red flag. But over to the regulatory authorities. As most SARS coronavirus 2 infections are asymptomatic in the mild or endemic phase, effectiveness of vaccination prim should primarily be evaluated against hard clinical outcomes such as deaths, which they did and found no difference. As we said, the extended follow up was the first half of 2023 when more infections were seen. Omicron was the predominant variant at that time. During this time, there was 225 deaths and still they saw no benefit from a fourth dose of vaccine, even with the high numbers of death, no significant effect in saving lives. They saw lots of infections. And we now know from the previous data that infections would have been lower for the first three months, but higher for the next six months. Assuming that the 23 data panned out the same as the 2022 data, which it probably would have done. Analysis in 2023 confirms no relative vaccine effectiveness for four versus three doses in terms of mortality, but shows a higher risk of SARS coronavirus to infection. 17% actually, more for, seven, for six months. Could have been for longer. Um, what about July, August, September, October, November, December 2023, which simply data wasn't collected. It, the, the, there was a cutoff point to the study. <clears throat> so we don't know. This is perhaps the most concerning thing here. Is there some problem that the vaccine is affecting immunity as a whole? I really hope that's not the case. I hope it's just a specific effect on on um, 
immunity against uh, COVID, giving more COVID infections rather than more infections overall. And of course, things like cancer are determined on the... Uh, um, <clears throat> cancer is maintained at bay by the quality of the immune system. So a few a few things that are concerning there, really. So get hold of the paper. There it is, eminently readable. And really, the authorities need to be asking the question, why are we vaccinating when it doesn't protect against death and COVID? Why are we vaccinating when, although it might cause reduced infections for three months, it causes greatly more infections after in the six months following? We're giving a vaccine that's increasing the amount of infections it's supposed to protect against. On that point of incredulity, I will leave you and thank you for watching and your patience.